was literally just a couple of months before I was able to quit my job. Hi everybody, this is Sarah from Who. Today I'm here with Lauren Mitchell, a Shopify dropshipper from LA. Thanks so much for joining us, Lauren. Yeah, Sarah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and so today we are going to get a little bit of insight into her journey, how she got started in e-commerce, and some advice that she's got for anyone who's just starting. So Lauren, how about you tell us a little bit about your story? How did you get into e-commerce and entrepreneurship? What was that like for you? Yeah, so I've been in e-commerce now for three years. Um, I started in 2017, and it was really just a way for me to kind of take like a non-traditional route and do something that I really enjoyed, aka not the corporate world, getting to create my own hours, really being able to be my own boss. And I had done so much research on YouTube, Google, everywhere. I had looked for basically viable ways to make money online, but a lot of things just seemed really like it would take just so much effort to learn the skills like I didn't really know much coding or really like technical computer skills and so this just seemed like a really good way to get in the door and what sold me was you know the fact that everybody wants a physical product they want to be able to pay for something and get something actual in return and so I figured hey you know why not just try it um, I started with drop shipping. I no longer do that. I kind of have my own warehouse now and I've, I've transitioned, but I started with drop shipping and it was the perfect model for me because I really didn't have very much capital to begin with. And so I was able to start that way and it worked great. Within like two months, I was able to quit my full-time job. I was making more money with my online store than I was with a career path that I had gone to college for. Right. That actually sounds really similar to my story because, you know, I also saw this kind of opportunity and was like, why don't, why aren't more people doing this? Is that kind of what you felt as well when you saw this thing? A lot of people are like, is drop shipping a scam? Is this really for real? But it really is the future of e commerce. <laughs> Yeah, it's so crazy that people think that way. I at first was pretty skeptical myself as well because you get done so poorly so many times and you want to give your customers the best possible experience. So for me, I was a little bit nervous going into it because I wasn't sure, you know, am I going to be able to provide my customers with what they expect? How am I going to be able to do this properly? And I was able to kind of find some things that really helped me. Um, I was able to find American suppliers as well. That was something that was super helpful just to cut back on shipping times and things like that. So I love what Sale Who does because I feel like it really helps cut out a lot of those issues that drop shippers have. They give the rest of us a bad name. Right. And for you, how important do you think it is having those local suppliers and shorter shipping times? Do you think that's something that's very crucial now in this day and age of e-commerce? So, so important. I mean, we live in the age of Amazon, right? So, I mean, they're literally talking about using drones to drop off your stuff. I mean, it's instant. Everybody has that instant gratification kind of push where it's like if they can't get something right away, they're much more likely to scroll past um, what you're selling. And so that drives a lot of people to be dishonest about what their shipping times are. So it's so much better to just work with folks that can actually help you get those products fulfilled and fulfilled quickly. Um, ultimately, that's kind of why I ended up with my own warehouse now over $5 million in revenue later. But not all people are able to do that right away. They're not able to have their own warehouse and their own huge staff that can like fulfill at any time, day or night. So you kind of have to find partners, and I feel like that's where sale who comes in, where it's like, okay, now we can actually have people we can depend on to get these things fulfilled, and we're not going to have horrible reviews. Yeah, absolutely. And when you started your e-commerce commerce journey, um, was it a big learning curve for you? Did you find success right away, or did you kind of find failure first? What was that like for you? So for me, I am like a psycho. So I <laughs> I was going to be a lawyer before I went the e-commerce route. And so I'm very, very much about research, knowledge, just find everything I possibly could. So for me, a big part of my journey was just watching the journeys of other entrepreneurs, finding out what worked for them, what didn't work for them. So before I really even started, I had a pretty good idea of the things that were not working and kind of a path that I wanted to follow. It was kind of this 
I don't know, just like mashup of different experiences that I was seeing online on YouTube was so, so, so helpful. So that would be kind of like a big recommendation that I would make is just look at their journeys, look at what works and what doesn't. Google, you know, top 10 mistakes that you're making when you're first starting out. Do all of that research beforehand, because right when I started my my company and I was I was shipping out. I think it was literally just a couple of months before I was able to quit my job. So of course you experience some failures, like not every single influencer post I did converted and I had to figure out why and is it the caption? Is it the graphics? What's going on? Why, why isn't this working? But a lot of people don't realize it's all about experimentation. And unless you're willing to have those small failures, you're going to have the ultimate huge failure, which is of course just giving up and not, you know, being able to reap the benefits. Um, but if you can put up with those smaller failures of, you know, an influencer ad not working or losing a couple bucks on Facebook ads, then in the long run, it's really going to pay off for you because every single little failure is just learning what doesn't work. And you're going to arrive at the point where it's like, okay, I have a pretty good blueprint and framework of like what works for me, what works for my demographic, my audience, and you can kind of just build from there. Right. I think that's a really great point that you bring up is that you can have these little failures and it prevents you from having these big failures. But the main point is that to give it a try, because I think a lot of people are afraid of that failure. But if you jump into it, it's really the only way to learn and to be able to like grow. Would you agree with that? Like yeah. you have to get started. Yeah. And I find uh, a lot of times, so I'll mentor um, e-com clients who are just starting out. And one of their biggest fears is just fear of like failure in terms of what other people think. Like, oh, I don't want to fail because like I don't want to be known as an entrepreneur or like a entrepreneur and then have it not work out and have all my friends know. And so it's so funny because I tell everyone, I'm like, don't even tell anyone you're doing this. Have it be your own little secret project. I didn't even tell my grandma I was doing my own store and that I wasn't going to go to law school until I had made like six figures in revenue. So it's completely okay to just operate in secret and fail secretly and succeed secretly until it's something that you can depend on. But don't let that fear stop you from just taking this leap and learning some new skills. Yeah, definitely. That's great advice. And let's talk about dropshipping or e-commerce in 2021. If you could kind of give a foresight into like, let's say one or two products that you think would be popular sellers, what would you predict are going to be popular products to be selling in the upcoming year? That's such a great question because for me, it's much more about rather than going just with the trendy products, it's really about going with products that you can build a brand around that's going to be long lasting. Because ultimately, instead of jumping from product to product, which I see a lot of people doing and then giving up out of frustration that nothing's working, it's a lot better to kind of find your niche that you're really, really passionate about and pouring everything into those products, really sticking with it until other people see that product the way you see it. So I know that that advice sometimes goes against the grain of kind of the folks that are like looking for the most trendy products. But for me, that's what I've really found is so helpful in creating like a long term brand is actually bringing something into the public and making it trendy with your marketing and with how you present it through influencers and all sorts of different collaborations. So that's what I would say about that is kind of find something um, that you're really passionate about and that you can see as being a huge hit. And there's a couple of guidelines that I usually um, I usually share with people when they're kind of like, OK, but that's like, I mean, I'm passionate about a lot of things. And for me, here are the guidelines that I used. OK, first of all, I knew that it had to be useful. It can't just be something that's pretty or that's like just sitting on a desk. It really has to be something that has like a why to it, because ultimately when you're selling, it's all about that why. It's all about what problem does it solve. So it has to be really useful. And then second of all, you're your own best client, right? Your own best customer. So what do you use in your everyday life that you could make cuter or that you could find a cuter version of? And for me, that was exactly what I did. There was a product that I was using every single day. And I just never really thought about it because it was just something that was so routine in my everyday life. And suddenly I realized, oh, I can make these cuter and I can make these more lightweight or whatever it was. And so I started looking on AliExpress for those sorts of options. So I would definitely recommend, yes, first, 
make sure that it's something super useful, it solves a real problem, has a why. And then, yeah, second of all, something that you use in your daily life. I think that those are some really good guidelines when you're selecting products. Yeah, I think those are great tips. And I really like the point that you mentioned that pick something that you can build a brand long term, because especially in this age of drop shipping and e-commerce, it's definitely not just like a make a quick buck thing anymore. It's evolved so much past that. And I think now it's really important for people to realize that drop shipping or e-commerce is not a business model in itself. It's just a fulfillment method. And the business model is so much more than that. Would you agree? Absolutely, especially in 2021. Trust is everything. So your branding is everything. Um, we've all fallen for it. We've all fallen for the drop shipping that takes 45, 60 days to fulfill your here, like half a year later, wondering where your stuff is. You know, we've all been through that frustration at this point. So we're a lot more careful with which brands we trust our money to. So yeah, the old model is out. The new model is all about trust and reliability. And you have to have, have really solid branding in order to accomplish that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely in agreement with you there. Like trust, reliability, and people are becoming really loyal to brands now. And I think that's become really important in this day and age. So final question for you. Let's say if you had, if you're a new entrepreneur and you had $500 to start a new business or gain knowledge or to get a start on your entrepreneurship journey, how would you recommend that they spend this $500? Yeah, that's such a great question because literally I was working with less than that when I first started out. So every single dollar was so precious to me. And I know for a lot of people starting out in e-com, they really don't have a lot to spend. So what I would recommend is I would absolutely 100% drop ship. Find reputable suppliers that are not going to screw you over. Find, you know, partners like Salehu or other platforms that are really going to have your back when it comes to fulfillment. And then second of all, focus all the rest of that money entirely on your marketing. Don't worry about stupid little things like logos, websites. You can do all that for free. Shopify has a free 30, even 60 to 90 day trial that you can do. You can use Canva to create logos for free. So don't spend all this money on things that just make you like feel better about being an entrepreneur. Really pour it into where it counts. And for me, that wasn't even Facebook ads or Instagram ads. It was influencers. So I'm talking about influencers on YouTube influencers on Instagram, but not paid ads where you like go to Facebook and you pay them money and they'll show your ads because right now you don't have the data. You don't have um, that, that ideal demographic to be able to create lookalike audiences and ad it really work. So what I recommend is for the first three to six months, taking a little bit of money here and there, it can literally be anywhere from like 20 to 80 bucks per ad and literally just work with influencers. Like Pay them a little bit of money, have them put up an ad that you create if you're on a meme page or a quote page that relates to your niche, or if you're actually working with someone like a personality page, have it shooting them a product. Again, this is why it's so important to have fulfillment lined up and solid, and then just paying them as micro influencers. It's better not to do like big influencers, better stay small. Pay them that between like 20 and 80 bucks for that post. And if it doesn't convert, then you know exactly what doesn't work, right? Something in that caption is wrong. Something in that photo is off. And so I would continue to tweak that as your budget allows, but really spending the minimal amount. And then once you start seeing sales come through out of your influencer ads, you're pretty much golden because you found the formula that works. You can just keep repeating it with different influencers until you have that capital really built up to be able to invest more in other parts of your business. Absolutely. That is such great advice. And yeah, thank you so much for sharing your expertise, Lauren. And if you like this episode, we'll be back every other week with more entrepreneurs with their tips for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank <laughs> you.